Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, I am going over how to travel with chronic pain. Now, why should you listen to me? I'm actually a physician assistant. Yep, see, there's my degree. <laughs> So I thought I'd show you some of my tips and tricks for traveling with chronic pain that has worked both for my patients and for myself. Not to get too detailed of what my medical problems are, but just so you know, I also suffer from chronic pain and it's lower back pain as well as a chronic tendonitis in my feet, which makes it really hard to travel sometimes. First up, make sure to buy your ticket early. I know you wanna save money on plane seats, but when you're stuck in the middle, you're not gonna feel like you can move around, you can shift around, which is really important if you're on those long haul flights. So I usually get the window seat because I'm a bigger person and I can lean a little bit into the window seat. If I have a connecting flight, I make sure to go on the opposite side of the plane so I'm leaning the other way so I don't get that tightening of those lower back muscles. I also bring, sometimes I bring a pillow if I know I'm gonna be on the flight for more than eight hours. Now, there are these bigger pillows where it can uh, it has a little notch in it where you can put the base of your sacrum or that the where your crack is really and it will offset um, some of the weight of your body onto your pelvic bones instead of onto the spinal column. Now the padding in those airplane seats is not good. So this is a way to get around it if you suffer from severe back pain. I also have what's called a TENS unit that if it's a really long flight, sometimes I will pack this in if I have enough room into my carry-on bag. Now I haven't had any trouble with bringing this on the airplane, but you'd never know with different countries. So what this is is that chiropractors actually use this TENS unit. You'll also see physical therapists using this TENS unit. What it is essentially is you take these sticky pads and let's say um, this is your spine, okay? So the middle of my wrist here is your spine. So you, if it's your lower back, we'll pretend this is my lower back. You wanna stick your two pads on either side of the back and then it hooks up to these electrodes, which then hooks up to this unit and you can control from this device how strong the current is. Now, I know you've seen this in other videos of how painful a period is or pregnancy is, but they actually use this for chronic pain patients. What it does is kind of floods the nerves in that area. Um, it floods the muscles so that uh, with, with stimulation so that they contract and um, it actually in a way relaxes them. I won't get into the deep physiology of it, but they use the, this in chronic pain clinics all the time. You can get this on Amazon for maybe 40 bucks um, when I bought it. So I will leave the link in the description box below to this. So the Bob and Brad muscle massager. Now I'll leave the link in the description box below, but I've tried several of these massage guns. This one comes with several different attachments that you can massage with. This is my favorite. Say hi to Finn, that's my dog. <laughs> this one I like compared to its competitors because you can see the size comparison. This one is gonna be a lot easier to travel with. But the reason I like traveling with this one is because of its size. Now it's a little bit heavy, so you wanna watch the weight of your luggage, but there are different attachments. Like I said, you just turn it on and then you massage the muscles or the areas <laughs> you massage the muscles or the areas that are really, really sore. They can get stiff during your travels. Um, this is going to help loosen up those insertion points. Now, if you have lower back pain, um, that can be from a number of different reasons. But if you have a sit down job, you're sitting for a long period of time, what you want to do is massage the outside of your hip. I'll show you a little clip here, as well as your quadricep muscles on either side of those, uh, like going up from the side of your knee up to the hip. Um, the IT band, the quadricep muscles, um, that's going to help loosen those muscles up. Um, and attachments so that there's less pull and strain on your lower spine, along with that pillow and the TENS unit. Now, as far as medication, I won't get into that. You'll have to go to your primary doctor because 
everybody is different. You can take up to around 800 milligrams of ibuprofen as long as you don't have kidney issues or you're not on blood thinners. With Make sure to take it with food though, because it can cause some upset stomach to the point where you feel like you're gonna throw up. As far as your luggage, you wanna make sure that you're not putting a lot of weight on your spine. I see people pack and walk with those big duffel bags and you're offsetting your spine and contracting one side and relaxing the other, walking through long stints in the airport, running to your gate even, that's gonna put a lot of jarring weight on your spine and, and your joints really. And so you just wanna stay away from that. So make sure that your luggage always has wheels on it. So the next thing that you can use is Icy Hot. Now, if you're in your hotel or you're at your destination, you could use the essential oils. Um, I use essential oils and I also use Deep Blue. This is kind of like an Icy Hot, but it has a lot stronger of a smell to it. You don't wanna use these on the airplane and it's not just because it's somebody's preference. Strong smells and perfumes can actually cause people to have asthma attacks on the plane. And if they don't have their asthma inhaler readily available or they mistakenly packed it in their luggage, you can cause someone to have an asthma attack and then they might have to turn the plane around. So just be careful of that. When you're using um, essential oils, try not to use them on the plane. But these are a great option to kind of help with pain or um, overuse that might come from walking a lot. So for me, when I have this chronic tendonitis, I either use these to kind of help bring that level in, of inflammation down. It helps relax me at night so I get a good night's sleep, which is also super important when you are trying to manage your chronic pain. Harder to do when you travel. Sometimes sleep aids can be beneficial. There's melatonin. There's also 5-HTP. Those are both over the counter. You want to stay away from St. John's wort. It is a very relaxing over-the-counter supplement but if you're on blood thinners it can actually make your blood even thinner so you kind of want to stay away from that there is also the um, more controlled substances like Ambien or Trazodone. The Ambien it can actually leave a metallic taste in your mouth drink some orange juice if that happens you don't want to go in specifically asking for these medications. I would definitely try other things because they are really controlled, at least in the USA. And it, the physicians and providers might look at you a little bit cross-eyed if you go in specifically asking for those. So try other things, see how it works at home. And if not, go to your provider and say, hey, could I just have this for my travel? Um, to help me adjust and see what they say. For my tendonitis in my feet, there's something else I also use. It's this diclofenac sodium. I have used this for years. This is a very old tube. It's probably expired, but it's I still use it. It's still good. Um, I put this right along the insertion points and um, where the muscle runs that's causing the tendonitis. It helps keep that inflammation down when I'm walking quite a bit and I have a sit down job at home. And so going from a sit down job to walking 10 miles a day um, when I'm out doing video and touring and things like that, definitely gonna increase that inflammation. So this is a good way where you don't have to take a medication. You can put it on throughout the day. If you've already taken the maximum amount of ibuprofen, this can be super helpful. Now, if you have good insurance, you might be able to get this at a reasonable cost. If you don't have good insurance, it's gonna run you around 200 to $300 for one tube. I think I've had this one for about seven years, so I'm not really supposed to recommend you use expired things, but it still works, so why not? As far as other supplements that you can use over the counter, one of them is actually magnesium. This one is really good because not only does it help keep you regular and help you poop, uh, that's one of the side effects actually, It can act if you have what are called SVTs or kind of flip-flops of the heart. It, as a young person, it helps with that, especially if you drink alcohol a lot. One of those first things that you're gonna lose if you drink alcohol is magnesium. So the that's why you feel like crap the next day because you're basically drinking poison, but hey, you're having a good time, right? Um, the magnesium, it is a natural muscle relaxer, so it's gonna help you sleep as well. So I wouldn't take too much magnesium. I would stick to around 250 milligrams or less per 
per day. If you go to get a colonoscopy or have severe constipation, the thing that they give you is mag citrate. So just keep that in mind is that it, it is a definitely a stimulant for the bowels. If you're on a plane or you're on a train or you're stuck in a car and you don't have access to a bathroom readily, you may not want to take this. The other thing that you want to check as far as supplementation is B12. If you get this tingling in your feet, it can be a number of different reasons, which you do want to get checked if you have that tingling in your feet or you feel like your muscles cramp up when you're walking and it gets worse the harder you exercise it actually might be an arterial thing uh, if you have varicose veins you want to wear compression stockings that do not have lines in them because when you're sitting on a plane for eight to ten hours if they have lines or seams in the stockings it can actually cause uh, ulcerations in your skin that can get infected when you're in your travels especially if you're prone to swelling it kind of makes that thin that skin stretch a little bit more and become thin and it will cause more more damage than it will be helpful uh, but crash, compression stockings are really good for helping with fatigue for helping with swelling um, you just want to make sure that you don't have lines and I found some really good ones that I'll link down in the description box below I'll put a picture right here of them getting back to the supplement I was trying to explain is the b12 supplement I have this vitamin b complex that I take just to help with metabolism and my my nerves and just give me that optimal situation to where I won't have as much of that nerve pain when I have that tendonitis that is in both of my feet Next up, I would say if you really struggle with pain, please do not be a hero. And I tell that to my veterans that I work with all the time. Do not be a hero, ask for help. Asking for help is probably the hardest thing for most people to ask for. But if you need assistance at the gate, even if you're a young person, don't let the judgments of other deter you from having a pleasant trip and being able to control your pain for the duration of the trip. Let them, let them judge, you know? It's not their body, it's not their life. You do you, boo. That's what I always say, you do you. Make sure to arrange that, call the airline ahead or let the gate agent know when you arrive at your gate to get on your flight so that they can help arrange things once you either get to your destination or help with the transfer. If you're getting going to somewhere like Amsterdam um, or Paris, you know, having these huge airports that you're gonna have to walk through, just get the assistance so that you can actually enjoy your trip pain-free. When you're on the airplane, you also wanna make sure that you're getting up every 30 minutes to walk around and stretch. This is gonna help keep the blood flow. It's also gonna help the muscles, prevent the muscles from contracting for such a long period of time that it's hard for them to stretch out at the end, especially if you have a stand-up job most of the day, sitting down for a long period of time, you're actually gonna have worse pain than somebody who has a sit-down job and is used to sitting down all the time. The last thing I do that's a little bit bougie, and I know this, but it really helps with that lumbar pain or the, the lower back pain, for me at least, is if you can afford it, treat yourself, make it part of your vacation budget to get a massage or a chiropractor adjustment right before you go on your trip. It, um, I would say at least two days because it takes about two days for your body to kind of release the toxins that come from um, when they massage you to allow your muscles to kind of readjust in your normal setting, uh, be able to hydrate well and, and flush all that out of your system before you go on to a flight or on your trip. Once you get to your destination, last thing I'll chat with you about is if you are able to book somewhere that has a bath available, taking a hot bath or a cold bath can actually help with the pain. Now, the rule of thumb is if you have chronic pain that happens all the time, a warm or a hot bath can be helpful. If you are utilizing muscles that you don't usually use, and you notice that you have new pain 
or pain that has significantly worsened, then doing um, icing those areas or taking a ice bath or cold bath is gonna be more beneficial. So having that bath available at your destination might be a good idea. The other thing is that when if you do ice, make sure that you are doing it only for 20 minutes. So you wanna do, the rule of thumb is 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, and that's the same for heat. If you go longer than that, you can cause skin damage. It can actually make your pain worse. And so always allow your body that, you know, your skin is an organ as well. So allow that time of 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off for either ice or heat. Now I have had massage therapists who specialize in myofascial pain tell me that alternating ice and heat kind of helps expand and contract that fascia to help loosen it up. Combine with that um, massage gun from Bob and Brad, which I'll link down below as well, helping to loosen that fascia, the muscles um, as you're going about your trip is could be beneficial. I don't have any research or data that would support that, you know, but um, I have done it myself and found that it's helpful. The very last thing that I will talk about is actually bringing a heating pad with you. And that goes for a plane, a car, or a train. Um, if you have, uh, I know that there are low voltage heating pads um, online. I will link the one down below that I use. Uh, sometimes I'll bring this as a comfort thing for if I have a stomach ache or back pain or something. I've had friends use it all the time. Um, it's just a way to, if there's not a bath available, to get some heat on that area and kind of help bring blood flow and relax those muscles um, that might be causing some of that pain. If you're in a car, you can use a converter which converts uh, the car um, cigarette lighter out into a regular outlet. So even in the car, you can use that heating pad if you're taking a long car or even a train ride. Once you arrive at your destination, and this is actually even beforehand, I always, because of the chronic tendonitis in my foot, I always plan out where the map of the city is, what things I wanna see, and the route to get there. Not for just for safety reasons, so people can, at home, since I travel solo a lot, can follow my journey, uh, but it also helps me not have to backtrack. So if you're backtracking a lot and going from one side of the city to the other, it's gonna add mileage and mileage on your feet. Yeah, if you're healthy and you don't have chronic pain, that's great, you know, and maybe a little walking would, uh, a little extra walking would do me good. But when you're trying to manage pain over a long period of time, being able to cut some of those miles off of your distance is gonna be super helpful in um, helping decrease inflammation. I always tend to get um, my accommodation closer to most of my destinations or sites that I wanna see because it also allows me to go back home, maybe do an ice you know, get some ice on me or take some ibuprofen or something like that in between seeing things. Last little tidbits, you wanna make sure that you know the emergency line, have your allergy me allergies to medications, medications that are controlled, you always wanna make sure that they're in the bottle so you don't get the original bottle so that you don't get stopped at the airport and potentially have that confiscated. It depends on the country that you're going to. Well, that is it for how to manage chronic pain when you're traveling. Um, again, I am a physician assistant. This is all coming from my own experience as well as, well as knowledge from my profession. So if you do have chronic pain, make sure to run your plan by your primary care physician so that you guys can come up with something that's going to work for you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below and I will see you guys in the next one.